Hey y'all, welcome to the Style Chronicles. I thought I would share my late February favorites with you guys. Um, I know this is a little bit late, but I do have some items that I really wanted to share with you that I'm really, really loving. And I know that if I was to film a halfway through March, uh, well, are we halfway? Not really, not even. We're still, it's only 12th, so we're not that far into March. Um, but I know if I was to film like a March favorites right now, these would be the items that I've been using. And some of them I've been using since January. I have not made a favorites video in, I don't know, maybe six months. I want to say October, um, September, October may have been my last one. So let me go ahead and get started. First up, the moisturizer that I've been using for the past two months is the Cetaphil Derma Control Oil Control Moisturizer. It is one of the only moisturizers that I can find when you stand in the moisturizer aisle at a um, pharmacy or at you know Walmart or any, any of those places, Target. It's one of the only ones that I can find that specifically states it's for oil control. Um, the rest of them are, you know, day creams, night creams, you've got dry skin, moisturizers, all kinds of stuff like that. This is one of the only ones that states that it's oil control moisturizer. And it's got sunscreen, it's got SPF 30 in it. It's formulated for acne prone skin. I do not have, um, I, I have extremely oily skin, but I'm very fortunate that I don't suffer from the acne side of having um, extremely oily skin. Um, I do have occasional breakouts irritations, you know, normal things, but I don't have sensitive skin either. I actually pride myself on the fact that I don't have sensitive skin because I feel like nowadays everyone you talk to has some kind of, you know, something that plagues their skin. And for me, I'm just like, nope, not, not me. They don't have that problem. I'm glad, you know. Um, I, I just don't, and I like that I don't. Um, I think I'm very fortunate in that aspect. So it is... For acne prone skin uh, with SPF 30, Cetaphil, I really, really do like it. Um, it's a lightweight moisturizer. It says 3 in 1, clinically proven to manage oily acne prone skin while providing SPF. Gentle formula that absorbs quickly and provides a long lasting matte finish. I don't necessarily think it gives you a matte finish. You put it on, it's very light, it absorbs very fast. Um, I use it specifically for SPF, not necessarily for the oil control aspect of it, but I feel like if you have oily skin, it's always good to monitor you know, what you're putting on your skin in terms of what might contribute to the oil. And for me, a regularly, formula, regularly formulated moisturizer always, always, always makes me very, very shiny, very, very oily, and it um, really defeats the purpose of wearing a moisturizer if I'm going to be so oily, if that makes sense. So, the oil control factor of it, for me, is great, and I just think it's a great moisturizer. It doesn't smell like SPF 30. I mean, it's got that faint SPF smell, but it's not like overpowering and you can smell it all day long. It fades and you just don't even notice it, and it's just a great product. This is my um, day moisturizer. I put it on in the morning right before I put my makeup on. Okay. Next, I will share with you my uh, new favorite foundation, and you guys know I cycle my foundations um, my daily one and my weekend one and even my like fancy nice you know one that I wear for special occasions um, I love the Smashbox for special occasions I like Chanel for special occasions um, I like Mac for the weekends the Studio Fix Fluid or the Pro Longwear for the weekends and I really I was wearing my Mac Studio Fix Fluid every day going through like a bottle a month um, it felt like that anyway. Any, so, you know, I thought, well, I really need to get back to a drugstore foundation that I can wear Monday through Friday and not really, you know, feel it. Um, and the reasoning for that was I've always been a fan of Revlon's Color Stay, but that changes colors on me. It, the, I wear the lightest shade, which is ivory, and it oxidizes extremely yellow on my skin. So it looks great for about the first hour, and then as it wears on throughout the day, it turns very, very yellow, and then there's a very noticeable difference between my face and my neck. So I stopped wearing Revlon over a year ago and just have not gone back. I just continue to wear MAC every day. And I started to hear a lot about the True Match Lumi, the L'Oreal True Match Lumi and how great it was and how beautiful it looked and this great finish and I think someone somewhere said if you have oily skin you should try it anyway so that's what I did and I can tell you if you have oily skin try it anyway it is a great foundation it's got SPF 20 
and it's formulated to help your skin, like to improve the appearance of your skin or the feel of your skin over, you know, the span of when you wear it. And I can tell you that the first week I wore it, I started to notice very, I mean, super, super small, just very little changes in my skin texture and how it would just feel to the touch or how it would look when I looked in the mirror. Now, it's nothing drastic. You know, this is not going to give you a facelift or anything like that. It's little bitty things that um, just kind of even themselves out. And I get little kind of um, bumps sometimes. Every now and then, it, I really can't tell when it's going to happen or not, but little bumps. And I think a lot of it is, I have oily skin, so I'm always trying to fight that. I'm always trying to fight the oil and fight, you know, the, I just mat everything matte and pile products on, you know, the moisturizer that's oil control, primer that helps oil, oil control lotion, you know, and then my foundation that's matte or formulated for oil, powder that's formulated for oil, touch-up powder that's formulated for oil, my Max Fix Plus that, you know, helps set your foundation. It's like all these things you pile onto your skin. This kind of lets your skin breathe, believe it or not. This is, you know, I, I do my moisturizer, I do this, and then I just powder and I'm done. And now I do have to touch up my nose, you know, by noon or so and every couple of hours after that. Um, but for the most part, this dewiness that you see is absolutely beautiful. And it's something that when I wear my other foundations, I add in with a highlighter, like a powder highlighter. I'm trying to highlight these areas that you see, you know, that are hi highlighted right now. This is this makeup. This is not, I didn't put any highlight on. All I put on was blush and that was it and the blush is down here. So the luminosity that you see on this is so, so true. The one, you know, it says True Match Lumi, which is luminous. Um, it, it's very luminous. It makes your skin look so beautiful. And even, you know, if you do have oily skin, I just think giving your skin a break from those products that you use every single day that you pile on, because that's what we do when we have oily skin. We layer. We layer and build foundations that help control that oil, that help mask that oil. And I think when you give your skin a break a little bit, and I don't know if it was necessarily the makeup or if it was just my skin getting a break from everything, that the texture and the appearance of my skin improved. But this really, really does a beautiful job on your skin. Even if you are oily, you can see the dewiness that you want, but you can't necessarily get with all the matte products that you pile on your face when you have oily skin. So beautiful. You do have to touch it up. It is not one of those foundations that is long wearing. It's going to last, it's, you know, your skin's going to look perfect for 10 hours. You do have to powder your nose, but even after you powder your nose, your face looks beautiful. I mean, beautiful. It just looks like natural skin. So it does wear off a little bit, but if you have oily skin, I would suggest trying it anyway, because I absolutely love it, um, even though I do have to combat some of those, you know, oily times. So there's that. Um, I do like to set my makeup with MAC Fix Plus. Now, you can see this bottle, you can tell how old it is because they don't even package MAC Fix Plus like this anymore. This, my husband and I bought when we were on our honeymoon and my husband got it because, okay, before we got married, he had a little bit um, of an accident. He was out kind of goofing off and he had a little bit of an accident and he um, got a very, he had to have stitches on, I think it was this side, above his eyebrow. And um, it was very fresh. So it had healed and closed up by the time we got married. Uh, it happened about three weeks before our wedding. Um, I don't necessarily remember. But his father and his brother were really smart because my husband was kind of out of it after the accident. Um, they were very smart. His brother would not let the people that were on call in the uh, ER sew him up because it was a wound that was on the face, they wanted a plastic surgeon to do it. So his father and his brother took him, bleeding and everything, to um, a plastic surgeon and had him sew my husband up. So you can't even see his scar. And that is one of the best things if you ever are in a situation where you have to have um, something, you know, on your face. And I mean, I know not everybody cares. Um, and the only reason is, you know, my sister also had an accident. She cut a little bit of her lip off. It, it's a long story. She had her wisdom teeth pulled. She was stuffing her face with um, gauze and there was some hanging out and she was in this, you know, medication state, a medicated state. My dad was supposed to be watching her carefully and he like left the room. And so she was doing this and she, instead of pulling it out or just pushing the rest in, she grabbed a pair of um, face scissors, like the little bitty snippet scissors, and she cut the gauze and when she did that you know she cut a bit of her lip I mean it literally peeled back she cut her lip off um, down here 
And so my dad, when he noticed it, took her to the emergency room and instead of letting them sew her up like they had planned, he said, no, I want a plastic surgeon to sew her up so that that scar is concealed within her lip. So he ended up, they actually ended up going to the same plastic surgeon. This happened years apart, but they were like at the same plastic surgeon's office. Um, and the scar, like on my sister, her scar is in her lips. So you can't even see it. I mean, it's barely noticeable when she wears like lip um, liner or lip stick it just blends all I mean you can't even tell and my husband's is up here in his brown you can't even see it but anyway before our wedding my husband had that accident so his scar was very new it was very fresh it was very pink for the day of the wedding he didn't want that to have you know to have to be noticeable in pictures so um, we went to Mac about a week before the wedding and had him color matched and he's actually an NC20 um, Yes, NC20. So he had concealer and he had powder and then the lady suggested spraying it with Fix Plus so that it would stay and look, you know, like skin throughout the day. So that's what he did and this has been in our cabinet since then and I, when I see it, will spray my face with it and love it. And recently I've just been doing it every day because it's just such, it's refreshing, but it's, wow, I can't talk and spray my face at the same time. I don't know, I thought I was going to choke or something. Okay. Um, it's refreshing, but and it keeps your makeup like in place. It's it like adheres it to your face, and it just looks beautiful when it's dry. So I love that. Um, and we're like about here. My husband doesn't use it at all anymore, but I do, and it's about here. So it's lasted that long. Um, so I really do think Fix Plus is a good investment. Next things, the Mac Prep and Prime. Um, highlighter in Radiant Rose looks like this. It's a pink highlighter. I love this under here and I've been putting it underneath my concealer and it really does brighten a lot. You guys know I have very problematic dark circles that I'm always trying to find the secret potion to um, erase or just you know make look okay um, and this really does help a lot. Uh, I do have to put concealer on top but I love that for that. Next is the Lorac behind the scenes eye primer. I have tried so many different eye primers, and honestly, this is the only one that I like. The only one that I feel like I could do whatever I want uh, with the shadow on top. And the reason why I say that is, I feel like with the Urban Decay Primer Potion, I feel like you can see it when it's on your lid. Like, you can see it's got a little bit of a sparkle to it, um, like a shimmer, not a sparkle, but just, I feel like you can see it. And when it dries, it dries in here, you have like a line from your primer. Same thing with the paint pots from MAC. I, lo I love Bare Study. It's got a little bit of a shimmer. Um, I like it under a shimmery pale eyeshadow, but like for this look, it's a very matte look. I, I mean, this to me is wonderful. And it's um, just pretty, like it's skin colored. You really, it's like nothing. I mean, it's really like nothing that you're putting on your face, but it works. You know, it holds your eyeshadow there. I don't get a crease. I get a crease right here, if you see that, because my little bitty lid the lid that I have, my non-existent lid, um, gives me a little bit of a crease right there. So, I love Lorax Eye Primer. Now, for spring, I always, always, always lighten up my look a lot. This is kind of um, more of my fall face. But spring this year, I've been following the whole Emma Stone kind of winged eyeliner look. Very plain, very simple, but beautiful um, with just a bright lip. And that's what I've been loving. So, for that, I do the primer and then Max Mylar eyeshadow. It's a satin shadow and it just goes on. Wow, I'm so sorry. I took my kids to the zoo yesterday because <laughs> it's spring break and look at my nail. It's like all chipped off. It's just that one. It's annoying. Um, okay, so now that you've seen my nasty fingernails, um, there's the Mylar and it looks like this. It's just a very satin shadow. There's really no shimmer to it. It's skin colored, but it gives my um, eyelid that very clean look that I can go in and add a little bit of a contour to and then do a wing with and it just you know really pretty really really lightens it up I make sure when I put it on to get it all like in here in the inner corner because it really brightens your face um, and then for the whole contour part here that I have to draw on um, I just use my wedge eyeshadow and that's what I use on my brows but it blends out very very lightly very faintly it's nothing like that you can like this is a very defined crease it's nothing like that it's just extremely faint you really can't even tell I've done anything there um, other than it just gives my eye a little bit of depth but that's it so just those things and then I go in with a cream or not a cream wait what are these are these cream no this is gel right gel 
I don't know what the difference between a gel and a cream eyeliner is, but I go in with one of these two. The first one is Maybelline's Eye Studio, which comes like that in a pot and looks like that. Love this, love this. And to tell you the truth, I was so intimidated by this for so many years, um, well, like two years, but um, for so long, I've been so intimidated by these, and honestly, I don't ever wanna touch a pencil eyeliner again. Uh, maybe just for my waterline and that's it. These, to me, are fabulous. Or even like a felt tip marker. I've been using a felt tip Maybelline one for years, and I honestly have so much more control with this that I love it. Um, for me, my wings have to be extremely dainty, very faint, very small. Um, the line I put on my lid has to be very, like literally the width of the brush I use, and that is it, a very faint line. I can't do a very thick, heavy, chunky wing or anything like that um, because it just doesn't go with my eye, sh my eye style or type. So loving that. Um, the brush that comes with this one is great. I also use an angled um, pencil brush which is awesome also it's a coastal sense one and then the Lorac cream eyeliner pro cream eyeliner which looks like this the top unscrews and the bottom pops out and then you just put this in here and then you've got like you hold the whole thing and this brush is awesome also I mean honestly I don't have a preference when it comes to these brushes because this one and the one that the Maybelline one comes with work extremely well and then just for my little flick um, my coastal sense one works but I'm going to do a separate video on the whole Emma Stone look, like a fresh spring glowy kind of Emma Stone makeup look. Um, and I'll show you the one I use for the flick in that one. But this one is this one. And this is the same. I mean, I honestly don't have a favorite when it comes to these two. They are both blacker than black and long lasting. Once you put them on and they're set, which does not take long at all. Um, they're like on your lid and they stay there for the rest of the day and I don't have a problem with running. With my felt tip eyeliner um, out here, my eyes would water because I have allergies. They would water throughout the day and I'd go like this and then I'd end up having um, liner like smudge everywhere. And it doesn't happen with these, they stay in place. That's that. Next thing is um, mascara, which is important when you're doing liner and that is, my favorite one so far is the Lorac Pro. This is awesome and it's the brush and honestly I'm usually intimidated by huge brushes because it gets all over I mean I'm so clumsy it gets all over this one really lets me get into that portion of my eye space and then this one just kind of pops them up and I love it I mean I just love and then you can do like that and I love it so there's that one um, and then two things that are just I'm like addicted to. My husband absolutely loves this. Um, the first one is the Amazing Grace perfume. I have purchased this for so many different people. Um, I know my sister-in-law is a huge fan of this and I've purchased it for a friend before um, and I've always loved the way it smells and I always spray myself with it and then my husband's always like, oh that smells so good, you know, what is that? And I tell him and he's like, did you get it for yourself? And I'm like, no, I bought it for, you know, so and so and that's it. And he's like, well I like it, buy it. So I finally broke down and just bought it and it's actually one of his favorite um, perfumes. Every time I wear it, he's like, God, he smells so good. I love it. And honestly, I really do like it. I don't like it in the bottle, but I like it when I smell it on myself, which is pretty typical, right? I mean, most perfumes smell like that. Um, it's just really soft and very pretty. Next would be my Polar watch that I'm loving. It's my heart rate monitor watch. I wear it with a heart rate sensor. It tells me how many calories I burn when I work out. Um, it times my workouts, and it just lets me know that my heart rate has increased to the point of exertion that I need um, to stay either at the level I'm at or to progress, you know, and get stronger. So I really, really love that. And mine is the FT4 and it's pink. It comes in different colors. This one, I love it. And lastly, two, three health products. My breakfast lately has been my glowing green smoothie, the monster one. I add protein to it. And then between breakfast and lunch, I'm always starving. Like I get to about 11 o'clock and then I'm like, oh, I'm hungry. So I've been using, or I've been eating the um, Trader Joe's blueberry muesli. Now this is, it's in a bag from Central Market because we got some cherry berry mix, bulk. Um, but I put it in here just to keep it fresh. But it's just blueberry muesli and it's delicious. And it's like a quarter of a cup, but it's perfect snack size and it's really filling. Next would be chia seeds. Um, these are from Central Market, whole chia seeds. This little bit, it was just, it's only about two days that I've had these. So a little bit more than this was $3.30. They're a little 
a little bit expensive when it comes to seeds. A full bag is usually about six dollars seven dollars um but they're delicious they are and they are the chia like chia pet seeds the ones that used to grow on a chia pet that's what these are um but now you, you know you can eat them um and they're just delicious i like to add them on my yogurt or um just to eat them like this but no more than an ounce that's why i have this in here um because no more than an ounce a day so that's that and they're really good they keep it's got fiber and protein in it so it keeps you regular um which Regularity is something that I suffer with, so I'm always looking for stuff to help. And flax seeds for a long time have been what I use, along with fish oil, um, like that. And these chia seeds are just kind of my newfound love. I just love them. Um, I like them on my yogurt for crunch, and then you can put them in drinks. They expand like a little, not expand, but they get, it's weird. They get a little slimy, but not slimy. They're just poofed, I, I don't know. They're good, they're really good, okay. And the last thing is Matika Orange Blossom Honey. Now this honey is from um, Murcia, 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 Spain. Yes, Murcia, Spain. Um, it's awesome, awesome, awesome. Most of the honey that you can buy here in the United States, like local honey, is like clover honey or rose honey. Um, it's dependent on, you know, what the bees have been farmed on so whatever the bees have been Mama. eating yes buddy thank you whatever the bees have been farming on um they're the, the, where the heart the honey is harvested that's what their honey is going to be flavored like or you know that's what it'll be like and um, it has very distinct flavors believe it or not um i notice it clover honey is something that i have always always available like i have this burleson's pure honey this is Canadian, Brazilian, Mexico. It's a bunch of different bees combined, and it's, they're just, they're fed on clover. Um, and then that one is just one you can get at Walmart. I have to have honey because I drink my tea, and I use it as sweetener and, you know, when I bake and stuff. So the other one that I like is the Kelly's Texas Country Style Honey. Um, looks like that. It's just a local honey. Um, it's from Chicota, Texas to the USA and you can see it all on it it's it's Texas honey and it's good to eat local honey um, if you're an allergy sufferer stuff like that I just got honey on my hand mm, I love honey. Mm, okay so it's good to eat local honey if you're suffer from allergies or anything like that it helps um, your tolerance a little bit so I've always got honey on hand and those are the ones that I will put in my tea I don't spend a lot of money on the honey on the honey that goes into my tea because your tea is flavored so you really don't get the thank you you really don't get the um, flavor of the honey through the tea. It doesn't express very, you know, itself. But if you're going to use it for food purposes, um, honey like this is excellent. And what we do is we get a cracker, like a little water wafer cracker or something. Um, you can buy really fancy ones or you can just buy simple cheap ones at Walmart. Um, and then we get a, a piece of brie or a camembert. What, Mama? Or... Um, here, honey. Any kind, I mean, Gouda, any kind of cheese. And we put a little piece of that and a little piece of um, prosciutto or salami. My husband is a huge fan of Spaniard um, jamon, which is, it's ham, um, but it's like serrano, serrano jamon. Um, he loves that, so we'll get a piece of that and then drizzle it with this honey, like just, you know, on top. So you're not really mixing it in your tea or anything like that. You're tasting the actual honey, like straight. Um, so you drizzle that on, a little bit of that on top, and it's so good. Oh, love that. My husband sometimes will eat that for dinner, and that's it. And I'm not even joking. Like, literally, crackers with a piece of cheese and a piece of jamon and some honey on top, and it's that's his dinner. Um, that's actually been my dinner. That was our dinner last night. And the other thing is fig. Here it is. This is another Spaniard product. Um, it's Dalmatia orange fig spread. Figs are delicious. Figs are very popular in Spain. Um, super, super delicious. Oh my gosh. Makes me want to just eat it. Um, but this is flavored with oranges. I think they're Croatian oranges because they're Adriatic, right? Mm -hmm. Mediterranean oranges. Um, but this you can... You can make like salad dressing out of it. You can add it to olive oil and um, 
little vinaigrette and make a salad dressing out of it. You can put it on top of, like if you're a scone eater, you can drizzle it on your scones or your waffles. I personally do not like um, pancake syrup. So anytime my husband makes pancakes or waffles or anything like that, I use this or just strawberry jelly or something. Um, and I don't, when I buy my jelly, I don't buy the sugar one. I buy the natural fruit, like polanta or something. Um, and I'll use that as a syrup instead. And it just, you know, for a little bit of flavor, but it's not as, it's not syrup, I hate syrup. Um, but this is excellent too. This we like on top of Gouda with a little bit of a like white cracker. Um, the crackers we really do like have pistachio and cranberries and um, pistachio and cranberries in them, and they're so delicious for you guys. We don't have that many left. This is cranberry pistachio bread. But you see the pistachios in it, and then the cranberries. Um, with that big spread on it, oh, it's delicious. So that's that, and that's kind of sinful. You know, that's not the healthiest thing. Honey, too, is very healthy. Um, in excess, though, you know, it's sugar, so it's not that great, but it's healthier for you than regular sugar. Um, and if you're eating it like that, just little amounts, it's, it's good. So those are my favorites for the month of February, my late favorites. And I'm going to say this is probably like January, February, mid-March favorites because that's kind of what we've been doing for a while and what I've been wearing for a while. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I will talk to you all later. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.